Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Welcome back to the second lecture for chapter 10. And in this lecture, I'm going to derive the equations in motion for the simple pendulum again, using Newton's second law directly rather than the energy method. And then I'm going to do a phase plane analysis for the simple pendulum. Okay, Newton's equation, F equals MA. So I need to compute the force and I need to compute the acceleration. Now, we're going to compute the force and the acceleration only in the tangential direction, the theta one direction, if we use R1 and theta one as the unit vectors describing the two dimensions. Okay, because nothing moves in the R direction, the, the um, connector, the massless wire is constant in length, L. Okay, so remember, the position vector r equals l r1 and if we compute the second derivative with respect to time using the formula that we derived earlier then we're going to get this equation for the tangential component of the acceleration now gravity acts only in the vertical direction so what we need is the component of gravity in the theta one direction, and that's this, mg minus mg k dot theta one multiplied by the unit vector theta one. Okay, do you can do a little bit of trigonometry, and you'll see that it's given by this expression. Okay, you equate this. With this, we, we don't care about the unit vectors because these are just equating two components along the same direction, and we get this expression. Dividing by the m's cancel out, dividing by L, we get exactly the expression we derived using the energy method. Now this minus g over L is constant. We saw this earlier in the course, and this is going to be useful when we compute the uh, phase plane, we can rescale time. We have a dimensionless time tau. We rescale it by the square root of L over G. You can check L is a length. G is length divided by time squared. And so tau would be dimensionless. We, in this new time, the der second derivative with respect to T twice is given by this expression, and rewriting the second derivative above, which I'm using dot notation, but it's now using the actual derivative with respect to the variable, we see in this rescale time that we've gotten rid of the minus g over l. Okay, so If we write the potential energy in this form, V of theta is 1 minus cosine theta. This is the equation of motion in the rescale time. You can check this against this expression at the bottom. Now the nice thing about this, look, we have exactly the form of the equations that we analyzed in the last chapter using phase plane analysis. We do this in the same way. We plot theta, the, the position variable, along the horizontal axis and the potential on the vertical axis. And minus pi and pi happen to be the same point. Remember, the mass is rotating around on a circle. So pi is straight up and minus pi is straight up. Okay, so this is what the potential energy looks like. We only need to worry about it between minus pi and pi because it repeats outside that interval. 
Okay, now, pi is a relative maximum, so that's an unstable equilibrium. And theta equals zero is a relative minimum. That's stable. That's just the, the uh, pendulum sticking straight down. Okay, now, using the same technique before, we have two separatrices connecting the, the uh, saddle points, and those separatrices separate three families of periodic orbits. One inside the separatrices, and these are called librations. They just rotate back and forth meaning they do not that they do not go through the the angle in which they oscillate is bounded by an angle less than pi oscillates back and forth but the two families of periodic orbits outside the separatrices these are called rotations and the and one family rotates all the way around through pi in a clockwise sense, the other family rotates all the way around through pi in a counterclockwise sense. Okay, and so this tells us everything about the possible behavior of the simple pendulum. Now, it could, we could make it more complicated, we could consider damping, we could force it by shaking the support here. You get all sorts of interesting things, but this is a basic formula or equations of motion for the simple pendulum. This is a model that comes up in all kinds of applications in physics and engineering. So it is well worth understanding the equations and the phase plane for the simple pendulum. Okay, that's a good place to stop. Next time we will pick up with the concepts of torque and angular momentum. See you next time.